Hello, beautiful soul. It's your show host, Regina Huber from Transform Your Performance with the same website, transformyourperformance.com. And today I'm live from Miami Beach, Florida, with lots of sun, as you can see, coming from all sides. And uh, if you met me before, you know by now that I'm a, an adventurous, eclectic nomad with a business based in New York City and passionate about traveling. And I have definitely a long list of travel plans for the for the future as well and a long list behind me already. So expect to see me in different locations as we move along in these episodes together of my show, What's Your Spark? because it's, it's really, really hard for me to just sit still in one place and then not move and not travel for a very long time. My eclectic life and experience on five continents has allowed me to become a multicultural and multilingual transformational leadership coach, an author, and an inspirational speaker. And because I have seen such a multitude of sparkling brilliance in women all around the world, I have made it my mission for this show and for all its episodes to inspire you to ignite a fire wherever you go and wherever your path leads you to, and to really move up that dimmer light control and instead of dimming it down, shining your brightest light so you can increase your influence and impact and in this way also influence and impact your income, which then allows you to live a more fulfilled life with all these three factors fulfilled. Once again, welcome to your show, What's Your Spark? What's Your Spark is about how you can show up more powerfully in business and in leadership and sparkle your unique leader brilliance out to the world. Beam like a dazzling star with it and shine with such a bright light and such a bright spark that people have to put on their sunglasses when they look at you. When I talk about leadership, this is always refers to leadership in any capacity. So, because as you know, you do not need a leadership position to be a leader. And leadership is really much more of an attitude than a position. Of course, we all want to be in leadership roles and make an even bigger impact, but you know, we can have those roles in even of inofficially. So yes, it is an attitude and it always starts with self-leadership. And today we are uh, here to together with my dear friend Sam Raffers lay the foundation for self-leadership by her sharing her unique spark. But before we hear from her, and before I put her on the spot in the spotlight here for you, uh, I want to remind you as always to grab your dedicated journal and take lots of notes as you listen to all my show episodes. And today you might just take double notes because I have this special guest for you who will show her sparkly spark with us. So I'm delighted to introduce Sam Raffos. That's her, uh, uh, and, and she has her own show on, on Win Win Women. She's going to tell us more about that show as well, I'm sure. And uh, it's currently broadcast live on Thursdays. So welcome, Sam. Hi, Regina. Thank you for having me. It's such a pleasure, and I was truly very much looking forward to this uh, very special show with you. I always love watching your shows as well. So I wanted to quickly introduce you to our audience. Sam Raffus is a metaphysical practitioner, a speaker, an author, and a life, health, and business coach for women. She is the host of Love Brand You, and I'm going to say that again, it is Love Brand brand you focused on faith and inspiration for women to succeed and you can join sam live every thursday at 5 p.m pacific on winwinwomen.com that would be for us on the east coast that will be 8 p.m eastern and of course if you're anywhere else in the world look up your local time zone so you do not miss her show so sam i have 
uh, three main questions for you today, and then I have some more. <laughs> I always have more questions, you know. <laughs> but these, all these questions really, and especially the first three, have to do with your special spark. So, uh, you know, in the last few months, I've been doing a series of LinkedIn lives with these three questions, and I have interviewed women from all over the world where I ask them, them exactly these three questions that I'm going to ask you today. Um, and, uh, you know, I thought these three questions would really also be a wonderful way to introduce other women's spark here on my Win Win Women show from time to time. So I'll have some shows where I, it's only me. And uh, at other times, you'll be able to also enjoy a special guest. Sam, are you ready to take the spotlight and share your special spark? I am, Regina. Okay, wonderful. So my first question is, unsurprisingly, what's your spark? <laughs> and Regina, I've watched your show enough so that I, you know, I knew that this, this might come up. And as I do with everything uh, with within my life, I am one of those individuals, as you can guess, uh, just from talking about metaphysics, um, I, I meditate every day. So I do listen to that inner voice and that's what I help other women do. And when I was thinking about it this morning, I was like, what's my answer going to be to that? You know, what's your divine spark? And the memory came to me of a time I was three years old, three, four years old. And, um, or, you know what, I had to be five. I'm thinking, because we moved to the farm when I was five years old and it's a memory at the farm. And I remember a voice. So I heard voices all the time and I just thought it was normal. I thought it was normal that you heard this voice inside. So, you know, as I know, as you know, as you grow, people don't seem to think uh, or have that same re realization. However, if I take myself back to that point in time, that's where I would think my divine spark came from is just understanding that inner voice. Wow. And I love how you called it the divine spark. <laughs> That's a great contribution. Thank you so much for adding that, Sam. And uh, yes, there, there's another thing here that we have in common, Sam. Uh, I grew up on a farm in a tiny little village in Germany. And I actually just also shared earlier today a LinkedIn post uh, about a little excerpt with a little excerpt from a podcast interview that it did recently that that talks about how it all started. So yeah, it just all fits really nicely together into this conversation today. And as you call this the divine spark, I'm just going to call it divine timing. <laughs> okay, so my second question is really related to what you just said. And it is, how did you find your spark? And was there maybe a specific trigger? You know, you, you mentioned that voice or those voices that you were hearing. But, you know, when, when did you find out or uh, just figure out what to do with this special gift that you have? Well, I think we all, you know, well, let's put it back. So, you know, I heard this voice and I remember thinking, you know, at the time it was shortly after that, um, my parents, uh, we were, we were foster parents. Mm -hmm. So my, my first foster brother, I probably would have been about six and he was about the same age. And I just, I, and he was special needs. So I just felt this um, kind of sisterly way of helping him out, helping him navigate, whether it was getting on the bus or going to school. And when I thought of that in, in the sense of my business or what I'm doing right now, when you're talking about my show, Love Brand You, that's where I remember it all, it, it all stems from our childhood. So that it, it, that's the common thread for me is that divine spark, how I manifest it, I think is just that sense of, of, you know, when they say, follow the helpers, mm -hmm. I always felt like I was just that helper person. It was just natural for me. Wow. That's awesome. Yeah, I definitely can see that in you because I have uh, had the pleasure to know you a little bit better. We've had many conversations. I have also watched your show. We had conversations after that. So, you know, it's just uh, really, really 
a natural gift for you that I can totally see that. And, uh, and uh, yeah, so I'm so curious, you know, how your spark now finds its expression. Of course, I, I know a little bit more than our audience, but I'm curious to, to find out more details. And how do you make an impact through it? So I really want to know all all about that <laughs> take as much time as you want because this is one of the main questions and uh i think everybody is just waiting for that okay well and and like you said as i was trying to um string it all together knowing that you know we we want to know where we came from and where we're at and um when we're kids we we just we just believe you know, we have that childlike wonder. And, and when I think back to those times, and let's just say from um, age six to about age 12, I was in that magical place where I just, I did my thing. I daydreamed. I went to school. I climbed trees. I helped, you know, my uh, foster siblings and life was good. And, and you, or I think about those times. And then when I was about 12, I remember one, one comment about, and it, I don't even think it was from my family. I think it was somebody in the community and not, and I know people don't mean to dull your spark. Mm -hmm. However, I remember that I had, I had won this bike, but I knew I was going to, I knew like I had, because I had won a prize when I was about six or seven, I knew I was going to win this prize. And then, you know, you come from a small community. Mm -hmm. So there's very, very few people. And I remember winning this bike and I was so excited because I wanted this bike. And this person just offhandedly just said to me, you have to stop winning things and let other people have a chance. Wow. Yeah. And I didn't think about it at the time. However, I think I did stop a little bit. I did stop um, talking about, you know, oh, I know I'm going to, I know I'm going to win because, you know, my voice said it was, or, you know, I've always called my voice grace and, and you know, people, people think you're kind of a little bit crazy when you talk about that, when you, when you talk about that inside voice. So from that point, I can honestly say, Regina, that was a turning point for me to keep it quiet. I yeah. never vocalized it anymore. I knew it was happening. I knew I could trust my intuition. However, throughout my, throughout my uh, adulthood, you could honestly say it, it probably did waver. I probably did waver through the years. Yeah. And, you know, well, you mentioned Grace. So what a graceful name, first of all, right? <laughs> that came to mind when you mentioned that name. And I can relate to it as well. So I often say in my podcast interviews or, you know, in my in my videos that daydreaming is so tremendously important and we are literally educated out of it at school so the first thing we hear at school is oh pay attention don't daydream don't look out, out the window you know uh, focus and yes it's important to focus of course and to learn that but it's also equally important to daydream if not more and it, it really is what our visions are built on right every vision starts with a dream and then after the vision there comes the plan but we cannot have a plan without a vision and without a dream and so many people always say oh you know dreams don't come true plans come true but there is no plan without a dream and i really think it's really important to remember that and when you're saying okay you were now uh, feeling like oh almost guilty it, it sounds like right because you were getting the prizes you were winning and then other people it, it's like this concept of scarcity like when I have something other people will not have it or when I make more money other people will make less and that's what we you know it's so ingrained in our culture and cultures not just ours here uh, and, and we really have to do our best to get that out of our systems. So I really appreciate you sharing this. You know, my, my brother also won a lot of things. I remember him winning a TV set <laughs> as a kid. And he was one of the best daydreamers too. And, and I, you know, kids don't have an easy time when they are. 
And uh, I think, yeah, I, I think we are realizing this now, though, as a humanity uh, at a, to a greater extent and, and are starting to, to change these things, right, Sam? Yeah. And when I was thinking about that time, um, it, it didn't matter to me if somebody else won. That was my whole thing. Exactly. It was it was kind of like, you know, when, the, the, you know, the so-called boy, when Grace said, oh, you're going to win that bike. I went, oh, yeah, that's great. Kind of like, that's great. Yet I would have been happy if anyone else won. So I think um, when we when we can trust that inner self or daydream and be OK with it and not not worry about the the outside and the logic. And I believe that it just took me a while to come back around, you know, so you go through those periods of doubt and people saying, you know, believe in logic where, you know, I, I always say, you know, my divine self, what, because I work in the mod holistic world, you know, body, mind, spirit. And I'm always saying that spirit is your intuition or your divine self. And I've always had that trust in it. However, when people are, are saying things on the outside that don't necessarily have your beliefs, then, you know, sometimes, sometimes you do doubt yourself and you go through that. So that's but, some of it that happened. But it's also interesting how we remember these things and how they relate to what we do, right? And also just one other thing that I wanted to, to mention, uh, you, you said you had known before, just imagine if you had told people that you had knew before, you know, how would they have reacted to that? <laughs> <laughs> That, that would have been interesting too that's actually the first thing that I thought you would you would tell us about but then it was a different story so yeah so I have a lot of stories that I had forgotten almost that I had just deleted from my active memory in a way you know that came back to me when I started this business and for example uh, in uh, I, I felt like I was debilitated in selling in the beginning just because I was so f full of fear of rejection. And I went back to my childhood. And, you know, a lot of us have something like that where we learn fear of rejection, right? And, and I went back to my childhood and I, and I remembered that when it came to to uh, ball games in physical education classes, um, you know, we always had like the team leaders who would choose their their team members for for handball or volleyball or whatever it was, basketball. And I was always one of those who was chosen last because I was just not good at those, you know. And I was, I I really actually would have enjoyed handball and some other and especially basketball, but because of this. I stopped enjoying the games because I felt bad about being among the last ones to be chosen, you know, so that creates a major subconscious trauma <laughs> that, you know, at the time you think, okay, now it's over, you know, it's, it's already lived and we can move on from it. But sometimes you need to go back and just realize that and say, okay, this is no longer can have an impact on me. And I now decide that this is no longer important and it doesn't have to define me. Right. It's amazing how that programming happens. And there's no, there's, I talk about it with um, everyone I work with or in my work that it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Like it, it's not blaming, it's not judging. It's just realizing that that programming happens. Yeah, exactly. It, judgment is actually can be counterproductive because then comes the guilt with it and whatnot, right? And we are we we practice self resentment, but no, it's really about knowing. It's just like with um, with biases. It's just about knowing that we have them and then, you know, questioning them uh, when they don't make sense, right? And and it's 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 sort of similar to this. I talked about this in my last show. So um, I'm, you know, I want the audience to know more about your show here on Win Win Women and the reason for your show title. Can you please enlighten us around that? Okay, well, it, it all ties in. It all ties into what I was talking about. And at Love Brand You actually came to me in the middle of the night. Regina, I, I still can remember these, these pivotal moments that um 
you know, um, so anyway, I had been working with this client at the time and um, which is what I do now as well. I work with women who have health and wellness businesses and I help them what I call get clarity, confidence and clients. So I was happy uh, happening to work with this one woman and she was struggling a bit with her confidence. And I, out of the blue, I said to her, um, you know, you are really good at what you do from everything that she had told me. I knew um, a lot inside out what she was all about. And, and I was, I was thinking, how can she not have confidence in who she is and what she do, does? So I kept saying to her, you have to love yourself. You have to love, you know, and I remember going to bed thinking about this client and waking up in the middle of the night, Regina, waking up in the middle of the night and just going, love brand you. That's what I need to tell her. Like you, you are your brand. So mm -hmm. anyway, I... I literally went and just secured the domain name and it sat there. I don't wow. think I actually used it in a business sense, probably for four or three years. Wow. That is amazing. It's a, it's a wonderful story. Yes. Wow. Yeah. I, you know, for some time I would say every day under the morning shower, I would repeat to myself, I love myself. I love myself. I would do that so often. I had just read this book. What's the title again now? Uh, love yourself as if your life depends on it, I think it is. And, uh, and it's a really interesting book. And of course, you know, declaring, especially also saying it to ourselves in the mirror uh, can also help us really increase our own confidence level and raise that confidence level there's just one of many many ways but loving ourselves is so key and it's not always easy because we are our own worst judges sometimes right aren't we though we are very self-critical uh, especially we women so it's really important to also recognize all our accomplishments, our, our achievements, all the good in us, all our, you know, everything we will still accomplish in the future because we have grown through all our experiences, including the painful ones and often most through those Yes. So everything we have gone through has happened for us and and uh, is it's still that way. So I'm, I'm myself going through two major challenges right now. You know, it doesn't mean that uh, when we do all this work that our challenges stop showing up. It's just like we are always really called to take it to the next level and to change the way we we react or we respond rather right to to those challenges and circumstances so yeah i love that love that sam thank you for that so um i i'm curious do you have any other things that you would like to any other uh things that you would like to share about your your show or um well i think it's just drawing it um you know when i said i used it i used it as a podcast in 2017 yeah. So it was a podcast and it was focused on personal branding uh, from a spiritual framework. Mm -hmm. And then when it came to doing win-win uh, women, uh, I had actually had a different thought for a show. That was my, I had a different idea. Mm -hmm. And then again, bringing it back to that intuition and meditating on it. It, mm -hmm. it, it, it was like Grace just said, excuse me, like, Really, do you really need me to tell you? Do you really need me, need me to be that loud? All you do is love brand you. So exactly. that's what you do with your clients. That's what you do with your life. Like this has become all encompassing with my life. So it just made sense to make love brand you uh, the win win women show. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. So why don't you share uh, one or two client success stories? We definitely have time for one, maybe for two. We'll see, depending on how long it is. <laughs> Well, I'm curious now. I, I think because I work in, in a unique way, and I think we all do, and you and I have talked about this. I think yeah. those of us in, in the uh, holistic space, it takes us a while to find what we do and what's unique. And um, I, I tend to, well, you said at the beginning, I'm a life health and business coach, and it tends to be where I work with women that are, are faith-based. 
So either they're look, they have a health challenge or right now I do work with a lot of women with their business. So they have a wellness business and they're looking for help again for their confidence, but also for their business. So my education and my experience in doing this, and I, what I always say to my clients is a lot of times um, I help my clients because I've made the mistakes and I don't want you to, do, I don't want you to repeat it if I can help you. So it's a combination between coaching, consulting, and mentoring. So my biggest or what I'm the most proudest of lately is uh, uh, one of my newest clients, um, the best compliment she ever gave me was when we were deciding what it was going to look like when we were working together. Her line to me was, I don't care how much it costs. I just want to work with you. And I just, you know, so then I was like, oh, so I can really charge. You. No, anyway. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we went through what that would look like, but that felt good. That felt good because I really do like to feel like my clients feel that they get the value and get and get taken care of. Yeah, and we all want to be recognized just like our clients want to be recognized. So it's it's just beautiful, right? Uh, yeah, I you know one of the things that I also really love is I draw to me very a very diverse uh, clientele of women, mostly women, also some men. Um, but um, that's something that I also uh, pride myself of because it, it's just, uh, it's happening organically. And I think that's because the women realize that I have a relatively easy time to put myself in their situation and to really get them. So oftentimes in the first conversation, I hear this particular sentence like, oh, you really get me. And I just started working with a new client today, actually. And she, you know, she said something similar to me. So when we hear these things and when they recognize something in us that in fact makes us unique, you know, that is really amazing. And uh, it also tells us that we do something right in our communication and in our messaging. So yeah, it's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. And uh, now we have a few minutes left. Sam, tell us what you have currently in the works, any new programs, projects, plans, uh, whatever it is. Okay. Well, for me right now, really, it is um, developing my Love Brand You show. It's mm -hmm. I'm working on that to make sure that I can be as best as I can be, not only for my content, but also the guests that I have on the show. I, I have a few lined up, including you, Regina. I believe you're you will be uh, sharing my space next uh, next month. Yes. And um, I am uh, of currently working with a few clients, um, which is really important to me and deciding whether I am going to offer a group program. I'm testing it out, whether it'll be a group program or a mastermind. And then my other love is I'm continuing to work on my master's and my goal is to get that, my master's in metaphysical science. So that's really near and dear to my heart to finish that this year. And really between that, my kids, my grandson, that uh, my plate's full. Yeah, I guess, I guess, I guess. <laughs> it sounds like pretty full. Uh, so yeah, that sounds really exciting. I'm happy for you and, and, and thrilled for you. And I know you will pick the right options and make them work and offer them to, to those who, who need you and who will benefit. So I'm, I'm excited for you. I'm also working on new content on my end for a specific mindset focused program. It's still in the works, uh, but I have a lot of ideas in my head, just like you right now, or in my, on my mind, I should say, not in my head. <laughs> we say these things, right, uh, Sam, and they are not, they make no sense because we know our mind is everywhere so uh, and uh, we, we are channeling our ideas even right so I'm, I'm doing my best to channel the best ideas for me and uh, I also want to uh, put a stronger focus on energy as well at the same time I just put out a new product that I have developed and tested over the last uh, summer which is called Inner Shifts 
it's a trademarked product so this is something that i just made available to my clientele as well so they can really uh, benefit from additional energy shifts and 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 move ahead faster and really release blockages in in a few sessions this is complementary to my coaching program so totally fits in with that because we do work a lot on also energetic presence in business as part of that and uh, yeah in fact i just have a special going on about that so if anybody's interested just reach out to regina at transformyourperformance.com for i'll keep that up for a while that offer for anybody who has not experienced it yet so if you watch the recording it's still available all right i think we're getting to the end sam so uh we'll keep chatting after but uh, i see my audience everybody watching next wednesday same time same place where we'll be talking about presence in business it's one of those big big topics so i might just do multiple shows on it and in the meantime as always keep sparkling don't let anyone dim your light keep shining sparkle away like a precious pearl because the world is your oyster <laughs>